Commissioner John Stempek will be participating remotely due to his geographic distance from, um, from Reading. Uh, this meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners is being broadcast live at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street in Reading. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. This meeting was videotaped for distribution to the community TV stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discussion of the chair on items on the official agenda <clears throat> as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. And I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of CAB Representative Dave Mancuso uh, to our left here. And is there anybody else who wishes to be acknowledged? Uh, okay. Um, oh, Chris from, uh, from Ruben, uh, Ruben and Redmond is here. Sorry, Ruben and Redmond. I'm a little jet lagged tonight. So if I'm, <laughs> if I'm stumbling over my words, it's because uh, I landed from China yesterday. As long as you don't start speaking Chinese. I, I won't. It <laughs> might sound that way, though. Um, and Bob Soley will be the uh, will be the secretary for tonight's meeting. Is that okay? I just was. Well then, would anybody else? Uh, Tom will volunteer for the job. That won't slow on the secretary down. Uh, first, I'd like to start off the meeting with just a brief report on a matter that's been out in the public uh, in the public uh, sector for a while. The, on the matter of the bucket trucks that were sold and some questions raised about that. Just briefly, in April, um, following the RMLD's policy, an employee bid and, and won the bids for three bucket trucks for a total of $350, triggering uh, questions. Uh, we immediately looked into the matter and found that our policy, which has been in place for about 20 years, is in fact does not comport with state law. Um, the the most recent update to this matter is that the trucks have been returned and as I speak are parked in, uh, in the parking lot behind the headquarters. Uh, and we thank the employee for, for doing so promptly. Um, so I in terms of those three trucks and any financial matters related to them, this issue uh, is mooted. But of course the policy and you know, the, the structure of how we do these su surplus disposal is very much something that we're working on. Um, in the wake of this matter, uh, our general manager immediately, fro among many things, um, immediately froze any other liquidations until we could update our policies. Uh, the policy committee met and I uh, joined in that meeting at which uh, we, we, we agreed with um, the general manager's recommendation to send all of our policies out for a thorough legal scrubbing and that, pol that process is, is well underway. Um, so we, um, you know, that's, that's part of what's gone on. The Hang on, I'm going to give you the rest of it. There's quite a long list of, of what's happened here. Uh, we do have a preliminary revision to the surplus disposal policy, policy two, in front of us tonight. Um, since we've been working on this policy for, um, for a few days now and there's been some recent updates, I think it would be prudent to, to not vote on it tonight. We have some late-breaking comments from the CAB members, which we appreciate, <coughs> and I think we need time to, to absorb those and, and do this properly. In addition, uh, it may be that the town of Reading has its own updating of its policies to do, and if that's the case, then we want to make sure that the, the two policies are in alignment to the extent uh, appropriate. So, uh, and given that, as I say, the liquidations have been paused administratively, I think this is not going to not going to cause any issues. In, in among other things that our general manager has done, um, she's asked all all of the parties involved with this to sign non-collusion forms. She's contacted the State Ethics Commission for advice. Um, she has called for a complete fleet maintenance practices and assessment study um, and had a company-wide employee meeting and state ethics training implemented, uh, a state ethics seminar scheduled for September. Um, so we're about as thoroughly working on this as possible. Uh, so that basically concludes my report on the trucks and we'll have more updates next month and hopefully be voting in the policy that's actually on the agenda tonight. Additional comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one item that uh, I became aware of that reminded me when the uh, department sent out the memo on ethics training, 
uh, board commissioners also have to take that training. I would, because of every two years, I've forgotten all about that. And you're supposed to take it within 60 days of when, I think it's 60 or 90 days of when you first get on the board, I believe also. So it's an online course. You can get it right off the, uh, the uh, Attorney General, I believe Attorney General's website. It takes about 20 minutes to a half an hour. And it's really, I took the course, you get a certificate, and I pass it around to the department to, to forward to the appropriate party. But commissioners should be taking, and, and CAB members, and everybody, every town official in town should be taking that that uh, online test. I don't know if they're doing it uptown. That's not, not you know, something that I'm not aware of, but uh, it should be everybody's taking that. Um, I'd just like to ask a general manager whether, so is that is that correct? And also, is there anything that I overlooked in my, my presentation? No, that was a good, uh, that was a good job, Dave. Uh, as far as the state ethics, uh, there are two mandated training requirements. One is an annual handout, um, of which uh, human resources has sent out to each of the employees and can forward that to each of the tab and, um, and commissioners. And the second mandated requirement is to take the online exam every two years. And um, uh, currently, uh, the um, town of Reading clerk is the liaison uh, contact, and so they actually send out the link and you return the forms uh, electronically to them. But uh, HR can help you with that. I'll have them send out an email. Okay. And, and there is just one other thing I'd, li I'd like to add to this, and then if there's any other public comment, be welcome it, um, which is that this is my first meeting as a chairman, and also it happens to be the first meeting after our new general manager's first anniversary. And um, the scrubbing that we're doing of all policies, I think, is long overdue, and it's really at the initiative of this general manager that we're doing it. There have been a number of other things that um, are really quite, um, you know, sort of new for RMLD, some very good initiatives going on. Uh, just the last few weeks, we got word that um, we were awarded a quarter of a million dollar grant for LED streetlights, which is a great initiative that's been out there to be done, and now we're doing it. Um, I think the, the citizens of the four towns are going to notice a big difference, and the town towns themselves are going to notice some savings uh, for taxpayers. Uh, that's just one of many. Uh, if, if, we were happen if we had happened to have gotten a, a blisteringly hot day, uh, all the citizens of the four towns would be exposed to a a new mass uh, communications campaign encouraging them to uh, reduce their consumption. This is something that's just been designed and has not yet been implemented. Uh, it, it's never been implemented in the past. Um, but when you get out there and, and get the message out, if you can knock off 1% of demand as, as a result of a mass communications campaign, you can save some tens of thousands of dollars or 80000 or something like that just for that one hour of activity by, by the citizens. So this is another thing that's that's a really brand new, hard to do effort that is now being done um, at RMLD. There's a number of other things um, like that. There's savings on legal bills. Um, there's a number of organizational efficiencies that our general manager has implemented. So I just wanted to thank her for her hard work. There's a lot left to be done, um, but I just want to acknowledge that that this this matters in that context of trying to uh, improve. Uh, management and organizational efficiencies at the RMLD for the benefit of the ratepayer. Uh, any other public comments at this time on this on the truck matter or anything else? Okay. Chairman, uh, sorry, John Stempek, are you with us still? Uh, no, no comments. I think oh. I uh, fully agree with uh, your comments. Please, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, sir. The CAB wanted to add a few uh, sure. comments if this is the moment you would like. Please to do. Yeah, is, if it's yeah, that's yes. Yeah, and I, um, uh, I'll, I'll get, if I can, I'll get the CAB things out of the way for you, if that sure. makes the most sense. The, first of all, we wanted to congratulate everyone here on the grant that you just referred to for LED lighting. That's pretty exciting news. Um, I know all the CAB members are, are happy about it, and I think we're all waiting to hear from what I, is the new CAB member, from what I hear, everybody's anxious to hear how that'll be rolled out in the towns. Um, on the truck sale, um, some feedback was presented to me uh, from CAB members. They asked if I would share this evening. Um, we're very glad to hear that the sale has been reversed and that the trucks have been returned. Um, there is some puzzling done by the CAB about exactly how we got where we got. Um, I think the, the general feedback is that um, we have not really convened on it. We'll get together in August and talk more about it. Um, what is the biggest concern is less so than even the, the sale of the trucks at for $350 is the process by which the commission and the general manager have shared information with the CAB. Um, I think uh, the way the CAB has viewed it, 
the fact that there were assurances that we were within policy and then discovered afterward and within the law and discovered afterwards that we that may not be the case um, is concerning and it, it's mostly concerning about the way we as an organization approach these kinds of things when they come up and so uh, the CAB certainly uh, was notified of the initial uh, activities um, but then didn't really receive any subsequent information so we are going to look forward to um, working very closely with the general manager and with the commission to make sure that we uh, have a good flow of information, can, can serve our role as advisors to the organization and uh, serve our communities well by being uh, advocates for them. Um, it really is to, uh, to the CAB an issue of process as much as policy. Um, and policy can't always dictate common sense. So we're, we are looking forward to um, working with you all to make sure that we can bring the community's input and, uh, and maybe make a little bit better process the next time around. Thank you. P points well taken. Um, just to respond to part of that, uh, if there was any delay in CAB getting information, I'll take the hit for that. Um, the, initially, it was my, I was taking point on gathering information and I was forwarding it immediately to um, the town accountant and others in the town to, you know, to help us figure out you know what the best way was forward if there was a need for me to also send to the cab uh, I didn't know about it and I'm, I apologize for well, that th it's accepted we're, we're, we just look forward to working on a process right. to make sure we know that how that that's going to happen and I think time. also to the point of you know I think our own understanding of it evolved over the over the weeks and we as we as we understood things and we were forwarding them on to the people like the town accountant you know the first I've heard from many cab members is in the last couple of days and um, and that's actually in response to that feedback that help make the decision to let's hold off tonight and um, that was my last comment yeah I want to thank you for doing that I mean yeah you, you, I think you mentioned it and so did Dave Nelson and that's fine it makes perfect sense so um, you know we're, yeah I don't know what more there is to say about it um, so we could move on with the rest of the agenda unless uh, the general manager has anything to add to that okay thanks mr. Chair. Um, okay so I think now we have a report uh, from from the policy committee from Phil the uh, policy committee met on uh, July the 1st um, and basically at that meeting there was both the uh, town accountant Sharon Engstrom and John Arena specifically to come and discuss the uh, the truck gate issue <laughs> Move over the truck gate uh, and you know make some suggestions as to what the policy should be uh, the policy committee basically all along had been working with the general manager and, and really felt that the you know had followed her recommendation that the policy needed to be sent out scrubbed cleaned up modernized I don't know if that's the right word but uh, there needed to be adjustments made to the policies and so at that meeting we met very soon after the whole thing um, happened so the whole truck gating happened and it was the decision at that point to send the policies out to legal counsel to get them cleaned up scrubbed up um, change you know do some changing whatever need changes need to be made uh, on that and that's where it stands right now um, I would hope that at some point the policy committee will probably meet again within the next month I, I would hope once the policies come back uh, particularly I mean one of the things I was going to suggest and you've already addressed it tonight in terms of the policy on the surplus the policy committee has not met to discuss that either at this point so um, I was going to ask that you defer that until the Lisa policy committee can meet on that one also too before it comes back to this commission so we make a recommendation to you but you've already addressed that so uh, which is fine so um, at this point in time it's just a matter of uh, reconvening the committee sometime in the next 30 days I would hope and that uh, we can go forward and, and you know make these changes whatever changes are necessary to move things along and clean up some things thanks Phil yep. um, yeah I think we'll end up with the tightest policy in the state um, the tightest, so that'll be among, <laughs> the, among the tightest in the state. Right. Um, and I think, so I think what at this point, is there anything we need to do to formally not vote on this, just from a procedural standpoint? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we will formally not vote on this. Um, now the next item on the agenda um, then. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, could we give you some comments? Yeah, absolutely. On the policy? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So moving along, um, 
Yeah, and, and quite, if any of the commissioners have any other comments, please send them to the general manager. Yeah. The general manager's office. We will. There's well, been, there have been some emails. CAB members also. If they I have, know if it'll they be on the comments. agenda in August, and if we need to move faster than right. that, and just right. let us know and we'll. And even, you know, so. Okay. Very good. Okay, so then the next item is also Phil reporting on an update on the charter committee. Okay, now, um, you have in the package tonight the legal opinion from Rubin and Rudman. Um, I am for a member of the uh, Charter Review Commission that's basically reviewing and updating the, uh, the charter at the Reading Town Charter at this point. Uh, one of the issues that has now been raised at this point in the Rubin and Rudman, and I need some guidance from the board at this point, is the in the bylaws, in the uh, charter, there's a couple of items that are concerning to the, to the general manager and legal counsel. One is the uh, appointment of the accounting manager and the chief accountant of the Reading Municipal uh, uh, Light Department, and that they try to make that be appointed by the uh, board, the commission. The other one is basically the adoption of Section uh, 30B at this point. Um, in terms of the two issues there, the feeling and the, the legal, the legal uh, opinion is that they conflict with the state law at this point. Um, that under the state law, under, the, under Section 164, Chapter 164, Section 57, I believe, is the correct, the correct notation. 50, 56, close. Come on, I got close. <laughs> uh, basically, in, the, in terms of that, it says the general manager is responsible for all the employees of the department. The only response, the only girl, person that the commission is responsible for is the general manager. We can't reach in the department tell anybody what to do. We can only go through the general manager. And this is my understanding of the law, and we've always done that. And that's that's the the item. Uh, and the charter, in essence, tried to change this. Uh, the other concern here is the 30B. The 30B was basically uh, if the commission, as I understand it, never voted the 30B from what I understand. Uh, I don't know if we did that intentionally or unintentionally. I don't think the previous general manager even brought it to the commission that we had to vote on that, quite truthfully, at the time this was going on. Uh, and so, as I understand it, if we, put the, if we vote 30B, the power contracts would also have to come to 30B, and that could be a, that could be a, a very problematic, problematic issue. Because those power contracts, I understand, are only stay open for a short period of time. And to go through the 30B process, you will not be able to get the best deals, quite truthfully. And, I, and I, correct me if I'm wrong at any time here, please. Or any if I'm still saying. The, the third item that you have here is the, uh, basically the information, the presentation of the Reading Finance Committee. Now what, in the past, we've actually had to remind the Finance Committee that we should be making a presentation to them in terms of that. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, Maybe we need to do is just maybe clean up the language in that area and say that we would make some sort of informational presentation to them in terms of where the charter goes forward. But and I've given you, and I don't know if anybody, does anybody need a hand, anybody need a refresher on 2003? Sure. As to what happened? Okay. Let me, give you, let me give you the, in 2003, is that 2003, is that the right year? 2003, the, what we call the ills took place, what's been nicknamed the ills. Basically, at that point, the inspector general came out with a report that found some impropriety, and there was a governor's committee that was set up by the town of Reading to over, to look into the look into these into these uh, procedures. Um, at that point, the, the some of these recommendations came in place: the fact that the uh, board would appoint the accounting manager, that the uh, 30B would be put in place except for the power contracts and there'd be some sort of informational meeting to address the, the 30B governance at this point. And that's really what, what, uh, what took place in 2003 at that point. There were other things that were proposed at the time. They were proposing that the, uh, the commission be appointed, which would have wreaked havoc quite personally with the, the three outside towns, considering that the majority of the, uh, the, the, uh, our customers are outside of the town of Reading. That would have been a, a major problem going outside of town. So, um, and that's what happened in 2003, and these changes came about at that point. Uh, what I'm really looking for at this point is some sort of guidance. There's a meeting. The committee is meeting next um, Monday night 
at this point. I need some sort of direction from the board. What I've given you tonight is a couple things. I've given you originally what I jotted and threw up the trial balloon um, with on where it's got the word draft and it says delete uh, that I presented at the last meeting of the, of the Charter Review Commission. I've also given you Mr. Brown, Bill Brown, who's a member of the Charter Commission, kind of wrote his own little area here too. And I've given you a copy of that tonight at this point. So that's where we're at. So. <laughs> Please, John. Um, well, uh, uh, thank you, Phil. There are certainly a number of aspects to this, and I think each one of them probably needs to be addressed uh, separately. Yep. I think if there is any conflict with uh, state law, we certainly don't want to be uh, in that area. Um, so I think it needs to be extremely clear that we are, uh, whatever we do going forward, we are not in conflict with uh, state law. Uh, I think there's also been a recommendation that the general manager uh, was going to uh, look at components of the 30D to see if there were certain pieces that were appropriate uh, and others were inappropriate so we wouldn't have that type of conflict. Um, and uh, the, the other provisions uh, in, that you had mentioned in terms of uh, appointed versus elected, I do agree that that would uh, significantly lessen the independence of the of the board of commissioners uh, overall, uh, which would uh, I think cause significant issues with our the fact that we service four towns and not just Reading. Uh, so I think that could be a major uh, issue as well. So I think we need to be very careful moving forward. We need to uh, take a bit more time to get this right. And uh, so I'm. I agree with you, we need to uh, uh, provide some guidance uh, uh, to you uh, relative to this, but I think that um, in blind and acceptance of any uh, of, of these um, cannot happen immediately. And if there's any guidance, I would suggest that that be the guidance that we have to research each one of them and come back with a recommendation. Uh, thank you, John. And I would just add to that that, you know, as part of our thorough top to bottom policy scrubbing, we're going to be Sort of doing just that and coming up with some suggested language changes. I'll make a comment. Please. Um, as I said in my recommendations, uh, there's nothing that we can find that anyone has ever voted. Uh, that's you know the the ad hoc committee or anything that had happened in the past. Only the board of commissioners can vote to adopt 30B. And when you vote to adopt 30B, you can't do it in pieces. It has to be its entirety, which would exclude us from being competitive in power supply completely. So what you do have right now is the procurement policy number nine that essentially adopts 30B in some fashion. Uh, that's being sent out to be scrubbed and that's my recommendation is that you would continue to follow 30B because it's good business practice but you would say in the policy where it makes sense and where it doesn't make sense uh, to prevent uh, any type of um, competitive uh, uh, process for the RMLD in, in its um, enterprise uh, um, structure. So uh, that speaks to the 30B. As far as the, uh, and Priscilla just went to get my policy numbers, but um, you have a policy right now that actually says that you can appoint the town accountant and that is in violation of the law and that is one of the reasons why that policy is being sent out. So my overall recommendation would be to wait for legal to come back with the recommendations on the policies since you already have ones uh, in place and to make sure that they are not in violation of the law um, and and I think at that point you might be in a better position to take your comments back to the Charter Review Committee. We could ask Chris wh when he might have those policies back uh, so that we can look at the time frame. Chris, <laughs> Chris you um, want to oh, speak to that? The, um, one second Chris, I just want to clarify it's uh, Jeannie's telling me it's policy 19. Yep, policy 19. Which is simply the Board of Commissioners policy. Right. So that's, um, there are, they, there are uh, uh, line items in that policy that, um, you know, similar to the truck policy need to be, you know, reviewed and scrubbed to make sure that we are not um, out of compliance with law. 
So I would agree with that, and um, as far as I'm concerned, that would be the, the feedback that I would bring back to the commission. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that I will add that it, the uh, I remember in 2003 that the town attorney at the time disagreed with the memo that you you have here from Ruben and Redman. So that is the town clerk is has submitted the copy of this this memo, this opinion to the to the Reading the new Reading Council to get their opinion on this, whether or not these changes uh, can be made or not. At this point, that is one of the decisions that was made at the, at the Charter Review Committee. No, no, it's being submitted only to the Reading Town Council. Could the uh, the Ruben Rudman opinion is, is being reviewed by the Reading Town Council also at this point. Clarification, John, is on who appoints uh, RMLD's accountant and RMLD's yes. counsel. Yeah. Is it what may I, I wasn't sure whether it included both the accountant and the council. Yeah. I, I may be right. Is and, it? And so you obviously would be a conflict of interest to submit something to the council. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the town auditor that was also at the two positions that we were discussing? Or just was no. it only the uh, right. right. It's only the, the that's not being questioned. It's basically that in terms of the audit, the the board has a representative on the on the town of Reading Audit Committee. And it's basically we use the auditor that the town of audit the, the audit committee selects is the one that we use. Uh, you had asked about timing with respect to a review um, of the purchasing policies. Um, in looking at a, I'm sorry, I can't hear who's speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Commissioner Sempeck. Uh, my name is Chris Pollard, counsel for the RMLD uh, from Rubin and Rudman, and I was responding to the question uh, from Commissioner uh, Chairman Talbot uh, with respect to uh, timing involved in reviewing the purchasing policies. And in looking at a calendar and thinking about what we need to do to complete that process, um, I would think that a uh, reasonable time frame would be uh, mid to end of August. Uh, we need to review the policies, research the applicable law, meet with the um, applicable uh, folks at RMLD who are in charge of purchasing, um, figure out what aspects of 30B make sense for the department, what aspects don't, um, and what other good practice purchasing um, practices should be included. Um, get a draft together, have that reviewed and commented on by RMLD's staff, and then present um, a final uh, recommended policy to the board for its review. Thank you. You're welcome. So we don't need to take any action at this point, or do we need to? Can you just reiterate uh, what you sent in legal opinion as far as the laws that relate to the town account, I mean the um, RMLD accountant council, and also maybe speak to the audit auditor or select as an auditor? Um, yes, the um, general laws chapter 164, section 56, um, specifically says that the general manager um, shall be responsible for hiring. Um, employees, agents, and counsel. And uh, the Golubic decision um, has looked at aspects of 156 in, and other cases have as well and have opined and clarified, further clarified that it's the general manager um, exclusively that has the charge of all employees, agents, and counsel um, at the RMLD. And that, with respect to the board, the board plays the, the extremely important function of um, establishing and setting policy. And that one of the most important functions of the board, besides policy, 
um, is selecting a general manager, and that was within the sole, uh, sole authority of the board. Uh, but then, with respect to the department and the day-to-day -day operation of the plant, which includes the hiring of all these people, that is exclusively within the control of the general manager. Do you have any comment on the auditor? I know that we use Melanzi and Heath because the town does, but I was, I was under the impression that that was just in a spirit of cooperation, but not um, by law. That is correct. That is not required by law. Um, the hiring um, of an auditor for RMLD finances um, would be up to the general manager's discretion. Other comments or questions? Uh, <coughs> I think the stressing of 30B is very, very much important. Apparently, the town charter says that RMLD should use 30B, but not for power supply. And as already been pointed out, if you take one bite, you have to swallow the whole thing on, on 30B. Uh, and the power supply contracts, as has been pointed out to us, Typically, the offer from the vendors is open for one hour. So the light department has one hour to look at the offerings and decide which, if any, of these to take. And within Chapter 30B, you just couldn't do that. Uh, apparently, no other muni has signed up for Chapter 30B because they have looked at that very uh, instance and realized it makes life unworkable. So I think that needs to be stressed to the committee, Bill. Yep. And at, at another time through town meeting also. Any other comments or questions? Okay, so let me let me just make sure that I understand what directions I've been given, <laughs> if you would please, Ms. Jamie. Uh, basically, the committee is asking you, the commission is asking me just to kind of hold off and wait until we get the policies all scrubbed, and to move forward at that point. At this point, at that point, so that's what I'm hearing from the from the from the commission. Am I am I hearing correctly? Mm -hmm. I believe so. so. Uh, okay, manager, very good. Just want to confirm. Yeah. Yeah. John, is that okay by you? Yeah, what, uh, what I'm hearing, with the, that the direction I'm getting from the commission is that uh, we, we're requesting that everything kind of stand in place right now while the, department, while the department's policies are being uh, scrubbed and updated and cleaned up and made all new again. And once we get that done, we can come forward with, what, with, the, with any type of charter change at that point. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think that's very logical, too, since the policies are... Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Is you. there any other public comment at this time? No. If not, if not, we'll move on to the general manager's report. Thank you, Chairman Talbert. Uh, Priscilla Gotwell is going to give an update on our recent uh, cable TV presentation on the unbundling of the bill. Uh, I think that I had sent the YouTube connection to the commissioners. I don't know if you all got to see it, but we, um, Jane Parento and Colleen and I um, were filmed, I think it was on June 25th or 6th, and we talked about um, the unbundling of the rates. Uh, we had a dem uh, presentation of a poster that uh, showed the new line items and the explanation and subsequently put it up on the website so that each line has um, its explanation. Um, and then we also talked about our uh, uh, responsive communications program. Uh, which we have set up in the kiosk uh, for customers to sign up for paperless billing 
and auto payment, and we have a little um, prize for um, anyone who signs up, uh, who, who has a chance to win a prize. Um, that night, we had um, we were set up for questions from the public, but we had no one attend, or we had no one calling in. But we had prepared questions, and I think that we covered it pretty thoroughly. So, Thank you. did you want me to talk about anything else in, in public relations? <laughs> update on the responsive communication that we talked about on that uh, cable TV show. Uh, we recently met with all of the fire chiefs and, and a couple of the town managers uh, this past week and the police department and discussing more about utilizing their um, reverse 911 system, whether it's Everbridge or uh, Code Red. Um, uh, Hamid Jafari and his staff has helped put together the, um, uh, the power watch and, and um, voltage reduction uh, um, scenarios that could occur that will go to those systems uh, while RM RMLD works uh, forward in, in their technology uh, strategic plan that may come up with using their own system in the future. But for right now, in order to get out that information, in the unlikely event that there's uh, an ISO New England grid system operation such as a public appeal for conservation or a voltage reduction or anything, m perhaps maybe because of the shutdown of Salem Harbor, we just want everyone to know. So if you have an opportunity, we're requesting that you sign up at the kiosk or any of the Everbridge or Code Red kiosks that the police and fire have throughout the four towns. Uh, the police and fire are the safe, uh, public safety that uh, is in charge of the emer emergency uh, communication right. systems, which are our Everbridge or, or uh, Code Red. And so we uh, presented um, what it, we presented what our power uh, alerts would constitute uh, somewhat of an emergency. No, I get that and part. Okay. I'm wondering what does the citizen have to do, if anything, to receive such alerts? Uh, they'll something about the right. The, the alerts are a power watch, which will basically say you should conserve between these hours on this day. It'll come out if you're signed up on the kiosk to get those alerts, whether a text or an email. Okay, that's the part I'm trying to just right. unpack. Yeah, okay. what, yeah. if When you sign up on the kiosk um, for each of the towns, you can receive the alert. So where are the kiosks? That's what I mean. Is like, what does sign up at the kiosk mean? Well, we have a kiosk here in our lobby, yep. and then uh, do you know where the kiosks are for each of the four, each of the three towns? So what we're saying to the public, if anybody's watching, is go to your town's website right. and sign up for the public safety alerts, yeah. which can be found where on the website? It's like at the under, is it clear where, where people can find it so they can do the signing up? Uh, I think it's a community link. I think it says community link. Okay. So um, hunt around on your town's website, I'll, I'll find it, that. sign up. That way you'll get the alerts and uh, we'll all be better off. The alerts will be also be sent to all four cable TV yep. uh, community uh, as well. Thank you for that. That's um, a great initiative. Yep. The next uh, line item uh, is um, uh, Chairman Talbert uh, briefed, uh, gave a little brief on. I'll, I'll expand just a little bit. Uh, the RMLD was a recipient of a $250,000 grant by the Department of Energy uh, f um, for Energy um, Department of DOER for energy efficiency programs for customers uh, of municipal light plants. Uh, the intent was to expand cost savings and, and um, environmental benefits. The RMLD will receive $73,000 for commercial industrial LED programs, $47,000 for residential LED programs, and then $31.25,000 each for LED streetlight conversions for each of the four towns, Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. Um, and that uh, plays right into our uh, six-year transparent um, capital 
budget that was calling for the LED um, conversion program over the next three years. The LED pilot program, now that we have um, unbundled the rates and we uh, have a new LED streetlight rate as well as a low income rate, uh, that LED pilot will commence this week. Uh, we're in the process of buying those lights and I will send the commissioners as well as all of the cab members the LED pilot program which has been looked at by each of the town managers. I, I went to visit each of the town managers and they're happy with the areas that we're going to be demoing. Very good. Okay, next, next item. That's next a great, item. great initiative. Okay, next item on the list is the uh, charging station. The RMLD is providing a joint venture partnership for electric charging stations at the place of their businesses. So any commercial industrial customer that's looking for, uh, to join us in this. These uh, charging stations allow access to electric vehicles for their employees. The employees' commuting practices are improved and it reduces uh, greenhouse gases amongst other environmental benefits. It also enhances employee benefits and increases re in, uh, recruitment. Um, charging stations are one mechanism that can help RMLD manage its peak demand. Um, the RMLD will, assisting, will assist customers in obtaining the grants from the Commonwealth to fund 50% of a unit with a cap of $25,000 per project. So if you have any questions, please call Integrated Resources at RMLD. I have a question about that. Sure. Um, it helps peak how? Because they're not, they, they will not, they'll, they'll be switched off during the peak hours? Because those are giant loads, obviously. Yeah, that's, um, depending on what their charging arrangement will be, yeah, we, we work with the customer as far as that partnership to make sure that we're, uh, you know, staying away from the peak. Yeah. Um, and any type of charging would be. Because um, obviously people go to work and they're at work during peak hours. Right. If they're driving to work and plugging in their electric cars and we suddenly have hundreds of cars or thousands, we're suddenly we have peak, you know, we have peak problems and that's. Right. Yeah, the charging scheduling is played into that partnership so that there's a win-win on both sides. That's another great initiative. Um, it's something I've been thinking about too, which is since we're so close to the highways and there's a lot of 80 mile range electric cars out there now on the roads and more coming and people need places to charge that's convenient to highways that for the future maybe we can think about building charging stations for the public that are convenient to uh, highway interchanges if we can. And it would be another way to generate business. Yeah. Just an idea out of the brew. Yes. We just want to be careful if people were to install them, you can't sell for resale. Correct. That's part of the terms and conditions. So right. we just want to be cautious of what that. What I'm so saying is that we could right? be doing it. No, I know. Yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to send that out there. Right. If you're interested in building one, just make sure that you're in compliance right. with uh, the terms and conditions of your, s yes. of your electric provider in Good this point. territory. Because there are social media sites that list charging stations and if you look at them you'll see that people do put their charging station in their driveway on these social media sites and people will will find those and that's that's not allowed so right. um, we'll, we'll be watching for that yeah. <laughs> and switching you off I'm just kidding but <laughs> um, it's not a, it's not allowed but it may be something RMLD could do directly and that generates sales and um, okay. I one, on. one last item uh, on my list is the MWEC debt retirement Mix one of our power supply it consists of three megawatts of Millstone uh, nuclear plant and 300 kW of Seabrook nuclear plant. And as of July 1st, um, this debt reduction reduces capacity costs by $982,000 this fiscal year. And um, I included that in the budget. So when we redid the budget and laid out um, the six year plan, that was put in there. Mix three, four, and five, which are also combinations of both Seabrook and Millstone will be retiring their debt in 2017 and 2018. Um, those were both, those are about $1.2 million a piece and those were also included in the, in the, um, in the budget. Okay. Moving on to the power supply report, Bill Selden. Good evening. I'm um, here to present the uh, May Purchase Power Summary uh, Report. Uh, RMLD's load for May of 2014 was 
million kilowatt hours, which is approximately 2 million kilowatt hours less than May of 2013. Um, referring to Table 1 of the report that you have in your books, uh, the energy costs for the month of May were approximately $1.73 million or 3.12 cents per kilowatt hour. The May fuel charge adjustment, as well as June's, um, was 6.5 cents a kilowatt hour. And the estimated deferred fuel cash reserve for the month, for the end of the fiscal year, is uh, projected to be $2.175 uh, million. Moving on to Table 2. RMLD purchased approximately 6.5% of its energy requirements from the ISO New England spot market at an average cost of approximately $0.05 cents a kilowatt hour. The peak demand for May occurred on Monday the 12th at 6 p.m. And the peak demand was approximately 100.17 megawatts. The temperature at the time happened to be about 49 degrees. Uh, and this compares to a 2013 May peak demand of 143.83 megawatts when it was about 92 degrees. So there was a little weather, weather uh, action there. Moving on to Table 3, RMLD's monthly capacity requirement was 215.57 megawatts for May. The total capacity dollars were $1.37 million, which equates to about $6.38 per kilowatt month. Table 4 shows the combined capacity and energy costs, as well as the amount of energy that was generated by all of the department's projects that we participate in. The costs for capacity and energy for the month came in at about 5.6 uh, cents per, meg per kilowatt hour. And of all of the kilowatt hours generated for the month, 14.2% were um, purchased from hydro or um, uh, green, green power sources. Table 5. Um, depicts the uh, projected renewable energy certificates that have been generated through the month of May, which comes in at about uh, approximately 8,733 with a projected uh, cost or value of $376,000, which is equates to, I believe, approximately $43 a rec. Table sh 6 uh, shows the transmission costs for the month. The costs for transmission in May were $628,000, or approximately $256,000 lower than April's transmission costs, and that has to do with uh, the lower peak for the month. Table 7 uh, shows the, uh, our energy efficiency efforts um, in highlighting the uh, total dollars expended to date for the fiscal year. They are $397,657 uh, with an estimated savings in capacity of 1.16 megawatts and a reduction of uh, kilowatt hours of 2.7 million. And that concludes my report. Thanks, Bill. Engineering and Operations Report, uh, Hamid Jafari. Stepped out. Oh, Can we go to um, switch to Bob Fournier with the financial report? Good evening. Good evening. Tonight I'll be presenting the May financials, which represents the 11th month of our fiscal year. So, looking at page three for the month of May. The net income with a positive change in net assets was about $1.3 million, which made our year-to-date net income a little over a million dollars. The year-to-date budget net income at this point was about $3 million, resulting in net income being under budget by about $2 million. The actual year-to-date fuel expenses exceeded fuel revenues by only $322,000. Looking at page 11B on the revenue side, 
The year-to-date base revenues are under budget by about 1.3 million. Uh, the actual base revenues came in at 42.4 million, compared to the budgeted amount of 43.8 million. On the expense side, page 12A, the year-to-date purchase power base expense is under budget by about $178,000. The actual purchase power base cost came in at 26 million, compared to the budgeted amount of 26.2 million. On the operating and maintenance side, those expenses combined are under budget by about $67,000. The actual operating and maintenance expenses come in at about $11.6 million, compared to the budgeted amount of $11.7 million. Depreciation expense and the voluntary payments to the four towns are all on budget. Looking at page 9, the cash section, operating fund balance is at $11.6 million, capital fund balance at $4.3 million, the rate stabilization funds at $6.7 million, Deferred fuel, $2.2 million, and the energy conservation fund is at $452,000. On the general information side, year-to-date kilowatt of sales, which are found on page 5, were at $632 million, which is about 10 million kilowatt hours, or about 1.5% behind last year's actual figures. Uh, during the month of June, we had the uh, inventory physical count, which took place at the end of the month. Uh, that went well without any uh, surprises. Uh, the accounts receivable confirms went out uh, the first full week in July, so some of our customers will be receiving those from our auditors, and we encourage them to respond back to them. Uh, the audit uh, field work is scheduled for August, the week of August 18th, and the auditors will be making their full report at the September board meeting. On the budget variance side, cumulatively, all uh, five divisions run the budget by $42,000, or about uh, quarter of one percent. I have a quick question for you. Sure. The uh, sales being down by 1.5 percent is it attributable to what? That's for the first five months of the year, right? Is that for the first five months of this year? Or that's not the fiscal year, right? W w which, which number are you looking at? Uh, number five. Year to date. Sorry. So that's five months, right? And its sales are 10 million kilowatt hours, or 1.56 behind. That's for the first 11 months. First 11 months. We're in a fiscal year June okay. 30, so this is the February. the first 11 months. So. Okay. So it's interesting that, you know, the sales are drifting down, right? So what, what do you attribute that to? I mean, well is, it, is it efficiency? Is it? It's probably the conservation efforts, uh, weather. Yep. Um, so for a year, though, averaging the weather over a year, you would expect it to be largely the same, right, for, for the year. So I, d I guess I'm just set pointing out that, the, you know, the overall business model is, you know, is – is sort of flat to, to declining because trends are lower consumption for a variety of reasons. In, in spite of development that continues, um, you know, there's sales are, are declining. So it's, it's something for us all to keep in mind that as we keep on the same path, we're going to expect to see less sales and more pressure on our finances. And uh, it, it just it's, it, it suggests a need to look at new ways to, to, to drive the business in different directions, new initiatives that are not what we're doing now. What those might be, um, we could discuss at other meetings, but um, yeah, that's all. Internet, did I say that? <laughs> um, okay, that's all. Anybody else have any questions? Or yeah, comments? I guess to just to follow up on that. So, if we looked at the month to month, is it a is it kind of a constant decline, five percent decline? Yeah, you can look at if you compare May uh, last year, May we're about uh, down two million. Uh, Kilowatt hour, so if you, you know if you even average a half million seven hundred fifty thousand kilowatt hours per month, you get to the ten million pretty quick. But even last last uh, year at this time, uh, we're two million dollars two million kilowatt hour sales down. Um, um, so yeah, I mean it's really a it's really a refle reflection of the weather. If you get a nice cold snap or, right. or a hot spell, you know, plus our conservation programs are, are working. Right. Yep. So within a month, you can expect the weather, will, but it, over the course of a year, you would expect those to be more or less average, that you have had more cold or more hot days. But over the course of a year, generally, they should be about average, the, the weather-related effects on consumption. In theory, yeah. In theory. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, so there's a, a drifting down of demand and a drifting up of fixed costs, meaning transmission-related costs, which will be putting pressure on us over the long term. Um, Thanks, Bob. Any questions? Yeah, thanks, Bob. Yeah. Good. Any
And uh, Hamid Jafari, we, uh, we missed you last time, but we're glad to see that you're back. And he's going to present our plan for selling data to the four towns. He's been working on this all week. He's got a complete plan for this. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the report, the first section is basically the first page is the financials. Uh, the next page, page one, I'm going to start. The capital improvement projects, we've made uh, quite uh, progress on uh, 5W9 re reconductoring on the Bollardville area, 50% uh, completed. Uh, the other projects are ongoing, the upgrade of the old Linfield Center, Cook's Farm, as well as the URD upgrades in all towns, step down uh, transformers uh, upgrades <coughs> in all four communities. And also the station for getaway replacement, which is completed. Some of the charges that you see as reflected in the uh, month of May. And the, the new customer service connections, the we had no, uh, no new commercial industrial service connections in May, but we've had some activities uh, for service installations and residential co uh, c uh, customers <coughs> in all four communities. The next page, you see the routine construction capital improvement. As you see, uh, we've made, uh, we've had quite activities in the month of May. Had number five projects completed uh, in uh, North Reading, Reading, and uh, Wilmington, including the Station 5 RTU replacement uh, at uh, Station 5. <coughs> we had uh, seven pole damages that were hit by cars and uh, in the other areas, such as the uh, underground uh, subdivisions, the new constructions, we had three completed in Wilmington, uh, two in Wil Wilmington and one in Reading, and we had miscellaneous capital costs uh, of uh, $57,000 to $724. So the total activity for the month of May was $156,664 that you see over there. Uh, under the maintenance program, we have seven maintenance uh, areas, maintenance programs established, uh, and we're making quite progress on those. Uh, <coughs> under the age and overload of transformer replacements, we've had a uh, number of single-phase transformers uh, replaced in all four communities, as well as the three-phase transformers that we're inspecting. These are the ones that aged over 20 years old, and uh, we are uh, planning to replace them as we uh, go uh, because of the age and the load, obviously. Uh, the poll testing system, the bid, we had a bid, uh, requ request for codes. We received the codes, but uh, the we, the we would like to do the electronic testing as, of as opposed to sound boring, which only one vendor uh, coded, and uh, it's going out again. So this time we are hoping that we have more participation from the vendors. Uh, 13 8 kV 35 kV feeders pro uh, qu inspections quarter inspection that's going quite well we've completed we completed four in the month of May the manhole inspection program it's in development the porcelain cutout replacements uh, we replaced total the 44 cutouts uh, uh, and upgraded those uh, the infrared scanning the substations that started in month of June, uh, it's completed in month of July also completed. This program started in, in month of May. So <coughs> we haven't found uh, significant problems at the substations with the exception of a few minor issues that we are uh, addressing and we're taking care of. Uh, and the system reliability, as you could see on page three, the system average interruption durations for past four years uh, for the month of May. Uh, we're doing well, it was 6.26, which is well below the national average and the <coughs> regional average. System average interruption frequency index was quite good too, it was 0.16, which is again below the national and regional average. And uh, lastly, the customer average interruption duration, as you could see on the chart, it's 38.13, which is again uh, well below the national and uh, regional average. On page five, you see 2014 uh, outage causes types uh, year to date, uh, mm, uh, ending May 31st, 2014. Uh, as you could see, 48% uh, of those were related to equipment. These are the transformers and cutouts and the failures that we've had due to the equipment <coughs> problems. The followed by uh, trees uh, 
and uh, uh, the wildlife uh, issues that we've had. And um, other than that, everything else pretty much looks good. And that's the end of my report. Any questions? I have one. Sure. Uh, on the first page, <coughs> uh, total capital budget for the year is 6.1 million. And through 11 months, uh, there's still 2.7 <coughs> million remaining. Right. I would guess <coughs> that means <coughs> that there is a lot that's going to be carry o carried over. That is correct. That, that is correct. Thank you. What? Any other questions or comments? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now we move on to general discussion. Does any board member have anything to add to tonight's agenda? John, any uh, ads from your side? No, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then I guess we need to move to go into executive session unless I've overlooked something, which I have. Oh, what should it? Oh, correct. Okay. So do we have an August date set up yet? CAP is meeting on August 13th. Mm -hmm. Well, not July the 16th. It's going to affect the board convention of the conference. Right, right. And I think we want to go for the first week of, maybe start get a policy <coughs> committee the first week of September. Oh, I see. So skip the August meeting. That's fine. I mean, it's going to be kind of tough. I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. Then maybe for the first week of September get a policy committee meeting and, and stick with the big September date. Because the only problem is we, we're not going to get the financial information. That's the problem with the right. schedule prior to that. Yeah. That's okay. Real no that. No, I think that's. So the proposed dates of Thursday, September 24th, and Thursday, October 29th for our next uh, board meetings. Right. Okay. And maybe you want to try to get a um, policy, policy committee date set up. We'll get a policy committee date set up there somewhere in between. Yeah. I'll send out an email. Yeah, I'll send out an email. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let us know on that. Um, just as a quick item, I, I now have to withdraw from the uh, conference this year. I cannot make it. Okay. The state of New York would like to see me on the 26th. Okay. So, <laughs> hearing that, I have a client. So, <laughs> have to delist me. <laughs> okay, with that, then, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Yep, Phil. Moved that the board go into executive session to discuss mediation and union negotiations update and to return regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Uh, second? Second. Uh, we have to do a roll call, right? Yeah. Or do we okay. the board. Uh, poll the board? Bob? Uh, aye. Aye. Ms. Pacino, aye. Tom O'Rourke, aye. Talbot, aye. And with that, uh, Mr. 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 Aye. sorry, John. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, with that, the motion is carried 5 0 0. We now adjourn to go into executive session. Thank you. Thank you.